Welcome back to The Ringer's NBA Preview Palooza. My name is Chris Ryan. I'm an editor at TheRinger.com. And joining me in the studio, my boy, Andy Greenwald! Thank Here you for having me. Whoa, I, I Andy, get... we have a special, special guest today. Why do I get the big intro? I know. We actually have a guest. Roy Himmer is in the building. Give it up for Roy. Yeah. What's yeah. going on, man? Now, it may seem a little incongruous yes. that me and Andy yeah. are talking with Roy, but Roy is a star of television. Am I? Yeah, yeah. man, you were okay. in one of the great shows of the century. Yeah. Parks and Rec. Parks yeah. and Rec. Yeah. Your time at Entertainment 720, Entertainment 720. will live on. Yeah. Yeah. And we're also hoping that Roy can help us, guide us through a little bit of our process fever, right? Yeah. Like we're having a little bit because we're both Sixers fans. Yeah. So we wanted to just talk with somebody who is a little bit more objective than us about how excited we need to be. <laughs> or not. Or not about the Sixers <laughs> this year. Um, tell you the truth, like, they're one of the teams that, like, is so fun to it's going to be fun to watch you know uh trusting the process and uh just just on and off the court i feel with the sixes is going to be great because as big of a presence as joel and and all those guys are yeah um they're even bigger on social media and obviously the spat this weekend was i was i was the loving Hassan it. Spat. I, was, the the Hassan spat. Spat. I want the to ask you about spat. that yes. you actually are not a stranger to yeah. creating your own social content you know the the roy hibbert Gatorade challenge oh, oh, is legendary, yeah, yeah, and at yeah. the end of this podcast, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try and recreate that. Oh, okay. I'm going to try and crush a lemon I saw lemon some line. Gatorades around here. I know somewhere. that was oh, why. Okay. Let's talk a little bit. So, I, I have one question. Yeah, you just, get, just get to get started because you mentioned the social media thing mm -hmm. all going all around the Sixers. I need some context mm -hmm. here because Chris knows this. I've been in the NBA wilderness for a long time. Wilderness. I'm a fan <laughs> of the Sixers. Didn't, I didn't know it was a wilderness. There, believe me, there's being a Sixers fan for the last okay. five or six years. Oh, okay. I'm coming back. Okay. I'm back in the NBA this okay. year. My favorite show is back okay. with the Sixers. Yeah. I need to know if this is a normal thing. So during your career uh -huh. as a big man in the NBA, yeah. how often did you, after practice, go play tennis and then jog home alone yeah. at night through the streets of the like city Joel you were playing did. in? Like, I, is that, is that, is that you once a week? That. Twice a week? Um, <laughs> I probably did that once when I was a rookie. Okay. You know, I didn't have a car yet, you know, right. so uh, <laughs> I did that, and uh, after that, it was, I walked to CVS maybe once or twice, but after that, no, I was getting the car. Like MB, did you have a friend in a truck drive No, next that was to just you? a Lyft driver. No, who was like, filming it, but he had a guy. Right. They were recreating Creed. Oh, is that what that was? I don't know what they were doing. He's a big presence, you know. More, <laughs> I like to stay in the... You know, in the background, in the CBS. just in, 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 yeah, CBS, yeah, for sure. <laughs> CBS, CBS, yeah. But no, um, just to be able to he, it, the stuff that he does online, he can back it up on the court though. And so as long as you can do both, he's fine. You play with guys like Lance, yeah. Like, does anyone ever have to be like, yo, man, like, just chill out a little bit on Twitter or on Instagram? I don't think Lance is that bad on social media or anything. He never had a problem. Like, uh, I mean, uh, Lance is my guy. He's misunderstood. Like, he's one of the best teammates. Yeah. You know, he works hard. Um, he's a go getter. But you know, there's certain things that is. Um, that I could talk about some things I can't talk about. <laughs> Give us one land story that you can tell, um, yeah. and then one you can't. <laughs> well, well, you know, so we, you know, when I was in Indiana, we had some battles with a certain team. I don't know if you heard, like the Heat, yeah. you know, and some um, yeah, some some te there's some good guys on that was on that <laughs> team. But uh, so Lance, so in the, so when we get to the games, there's always a ball boy in the locker room, and he's always hustling. There's always this guy, yo, he brings out his coat. A little bit. Hey, you guys want some DVDs? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, it's like he, Canal Street. He, yeah. Like, so he'd be selling. He's, what kind of DVD? <laughs> just whatever you want. Whatever's oh, on the theaters. Like, oh, okay. Oh, I think it's like, oh, in I think the like Indiana Pacer playoff basketball. <laughs> oh no, or I, don't, I don't know about it. No, no, he, he, he ain't watching that. He ain't <laughs> watching that. Um, but no. So so you know he get boot. Like, they would be selling bootleg DVDs in the mm -hmm. locker room. You know. So eventually that guy got fired uh, for selling. DVDs, but uh, so I'm on the plane riding back, and I believe uh, George Hill is sitting in front of me, and Lance is sitting to the right, and one seat ahead of me, and um, Lance loves to dance and stuff like that, you know, and uh, so he was saying, all right, I'm about to put on, I'm gonna try this movie, it's like Step Up, you know, Step Up, you know, you <laughs> dance and everything like that, right? So I'm like, all right, so you know, I'm gonna have my headphones on, and all of a sudden he gets up to go use the bathroom, and uh, what's that movie? Uh, with the male strippers, Magic uh, Mike. Magic Mike. Yeah. So I see on the on the, the title card Magic Mike on the screen. Yeah. And I'm like, gee, what's he watching? You know, he's watching. And then 
And then, uh, so we, George is just like, yo, what are you watching? Like, he's like, what you mean? I'm watching like a step up movie. Because James Hammer's in it? Yeah, yeah. You know, and then he's just like, no, what are you talking about? He's like, yo, that's like a story about male strippers. You know, he was like, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. He slams the, 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 the laptop down and just gets all defensive. He's like, man, man F you all, man. I can't believe, Steve, I feel like we're leaving intellectual yeah. property on the table. Magic Lance would be an incredible yeah. third he magic be light for, movie. He, he's been working hard on his body. He's always posting online about, um, Working out hard, eating right, so he should be Magic Lance for for Halloween. It's right around the corner. At least a nickname has been. Yeah, born. get a rodeo hat on and you know get his you know thing going. I don't want to get you in any trouble with yeah. teammates, past, yeah. present, or future, but is the story you can't tell about Lance also about Magic? Lance? <laughs> <laughs> Next, question. Next question. I think we all know the Next answer. Question. You know what, man? You brought up the heat, yeah. uh, and I was kind of wondering because this is a this is a strange season yeah. where all these teams have kind of like really re like rejiggered to get to got multiple super yeah. teams you guys were some of the toughest competition that the heat faced yeah. at their peak how hard is it psychologically when there's a team that so many experts are picking i mean i'm not even going experts because i think yeah. most people are like the warriors are going to win this season yeah. but how, how hard is it when you're a competitor to psychologically get yourself for a, for a season you know you have to hit that really tough wall when you when you run into that super team down the end. I mean, you, you when you run into the team during the regular season, you're just like, all right, you know what? We may play them three or four times, but at least split or like, you know, just that and the other. And, um, you know, the t teams I've been on since Indiana, you're just like, oh, hopefully we get this win, it'd be great. Yeah. That's like our season, yeah. you know? But um, you try to do your best. But when you go into the, to the playoffs to play these super teams, uh, I've only had experience with Miami, but you've played them so many times, you know what they're going to do, and it's just like a, a game of chess, you yeah. know. So, but during the regular season, um, it's kind of hard, you know. So you expect those teams to win, but you have to make sure you win the other game. So at the beginning of their season or the week, David West, but all right, we have four games this week. We have, you know, San Antonio. We have. I don't want to throw any other teams under the bus. It's but, fine. Uh, we're talking you know, about injury no, history. No, 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 I know, I know. You may have, like, New Jersey Nets. Yeah. I think we were playing the Nets when they were, like, one, like one or two games a yeah. month. And we are just like, all right, you know what? We can't be that team to lose to them. So we have to win this. So we have to win three out of four. Right. You know, and you may give up that San Antonio or Cleveland with LeBron or, or Miami, you know? As long as so, you beat the Nets. So, <laughs> yeah. We all yeah. have a nets in our They're life. They're not even yeah. in New Jersey be. anymore. You don't have to yeah. worry about it. Only at the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so, yeah. I, I don't want to make it seem like I have only one thing on my mind, yeah. but I want to go back to something you said about Joel Embiid. Let's do it. Um, you said early on about his, his spat with Hassan Whiteside, that yeah. he can back it up on the court. Can you tell, are, are there examples in your career of people who have been bringing it on social media, but can't back or it up on the Or even just talk trash and couldn't back yeah, it up. Yeah, because I was watching, because even in those preseason games, Embiid is, he's talking. Yeah. He's talking a lot. Oh, he, he said, he, he was oh, like, against the Nets, he was like, he was like, he got fouled once, and he was like, you can't guard me. Yeah, like, when you're in no, that he, zone. No, he had another word in there. Yeah, I know. When, when, you you're, in, to say when you're in the zone, you know, you just, you're feeling it. You don't care. You can look at the bench. Like, I don't think you single out anybody in the bench. You look through the bench and you just say stuff, <laughs> you know, but uh, usually, like, I never talked unless somebody was talking to me, this, that, and the other, but. That kid's amazing, and Hassan Whiteside is a great talent as well. So, um, I will, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna check that game out. Yeah. You know, Philly, Miami, this season. Uh, I give, I give, uh, Phil, I mean Joel, like the edge in the one-on-one -on -one matchup because, you know, he gets the ball a lot. Yeah. You know, well, I know um, Ben wasn't there last season, but uh, he got the ball a lot. And the only reason why, and I'm not taking anything away from Hassan, but there's been times during the season I've seen them uh, when we play, matched up where his point guards just wouldn't pass him the ball. He would be open, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't get the ball. So that's in terms of, like, the points, like, you know, you, you compare, all right, I'm going up against this guy, got to keep him below his average. You know, uh, Joel may have, you know, 30, 10, and 5. Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> Prayer you know Hassan, Hassan may have 18, 10, and 10, or, yeah. you know, 8 and 10, or something like that, you know. It's just because, you know, Embiid gets the ball a lot, and I think that he he'll score. But Hassan could score as well. But um, but yeah, I get. I get just but, has to feed him, man. Yeah, but also, me, Embiid's a social media star because he embeds the location. He puts yeah. jokes in the location of his tweets. Uh, he's on a whole nother level. Yeah, his location I mean, was extremely ass. I, I Can feel, I say that on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in five years, he will like be able to go teach a class at Kansas. Right. On like social media <laughs> and everything like that. As a professional, I'm wondering your opinion about this because very often yeah. 
with NBA or with sports in general, I am a fan of someone who might not be the best in terms of like you look at the stat sheet or you mm -hmm. look at traditional. Mm -hmm. Coming from Philly, Iverson's my all-time favorite player. Mm -hmm. George, I love exactly. Uh, yeah. I love Embiid. Yeah. These guys aren't like if you're doing pure. We have some stats guys here, right? Give me some stats because I don't actually know. Embiid's but, like, good. Like he, yeah. Embiid is actually good, but yeah. I love the totality of the player, yeah. even if he the personality. Twenty yeah. games this year. Yeah, I still love him. Do you do you appreciate that line of fandom, or as a player, is that harder for you because you see you know who's really good and who's really not? Um, I know I've named. I have ADD, things, so if I start doing stuff, just nah, let me know. That's what this um, is. This is it's a free and open <laughs> conversation. Just All right. Um, I just feel like with 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 with, I like guys. All right. So when you're a kid and you're on the path to get into the NBA, there's things that are you have like social media training, you have media training, yeah. you have to say. You know, you have to give praise to the team even though you beat them, this, that, and the other. Unless they're, they're the New Jersey Nets. <laughs> in which case, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, like, he seems to buck the trend, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, like, to be able to go out there and just be like, you know, that team was trash. You know, we should beat them, you know? But obviously, like, the coach is going to tell you, hey, you know what? This is what you have to say. Mm -hmm. But to be able to back it up <laughs> on the court but then also talk trash and then, you know, back it up again, like, triple down, double down on yeah. social media – that takes some balls, so, um, you know, I, I, I like him for that. But and to do it with a smile. So far, yeah, he's been really like, funny. I mean, yeah. he won me over when he was dancing with the, uh, the <laughs> dance team yeah. after the game. Yeah. I'm like, damn, big man got some moves. He's though. on stage with Meek Mill. He was yeah. You mentioned uh, Ben Simmons a little yeah. bit. There's another uh, player on the Sixers that I think people are a little <laughs> more concerned about. Is that, That's Markel. So Markel mm -hmm. Fultz, number one pick. And has had a couple yeah. of a couple of injuries DMV, this season. DMV guy right there. DMV guy. Yeah, DC, Maryland, Virginia. And mm -hmm. so I was at the Vegas game, uh -huh. the summer league game, where he twisted his ankle. Mm -hmm. and your heart, your heart stopped. Yeah, it literally did for like 25 <laughs> yeah. seconds. And since then, he heard, you know, he's got a shoulder injury. Something's going on with his shot, his free throw form. Give, give the man some time. That's what I'm saying. Give, give the, the man. That's what I'm saying, Roy. Right? Just go ahead. No, let, yeah. let Roy tell me to give, give the man some time. He, he, like, he'll be fine. Like, he's making me feel better. You know, like, Kevin, like, you hear that? <laughs> well, well I, and I'm not comparing. I don't want the when I do interviews, I, especially like right now, I'm like not playing. I don't want to start crap with other people, sure. but like, and I don't want to make comparisons. I don't want headlines to be like a oh, Roy saying this, that, and the other. I don't really need that heat. Like I said, I like to stay in the background. But like, like Kobe, like I don't know the stats. Like his first couple of years, I'm not sure what his numbers were. But like you know where he, you know where he's sure. at. I mean, give the kid, you know, so, two, three years. Roy Hibbert says Markel Fultz will be the next Kobe Bryant. <laughs> yep. yeah. That's my headline. Yes! I'm not, I'm not making the comparison, but it. just give the, give the kid some time. He'll develop. You know, he has veteran guys. Well, Joel's in his third year. Well, got Amir He's Johnson. got Reddick. Amir Johnson. He's got, got Reddick. Really um, who else is the... I feel like their average age Jared has to Bayless. be like 24, 25. It is, uh, yeah. I think Jared um, Bayless, Reddick. Jared Bayless, Reddick. That's... Well, he I has mean, some good players around him. Exactly. He does. <laughs> you know, yeah. Furkan, Furkan could be 35. We no, they've got young guys. They've got some yeah. veterans. I think they're going to so be he, good So they could shoulder the load until he's ready, you know? So, um, but I, I feel like he's going to be a good player. And you obviously need a point guard that's confident in himself. And when you have a guard that feels like they have to do everything right away and they're a rookie player, I've seen that with uh, D'Angelo. Like, you mm -hmm. have to, like, pass yeah. the ball. Like, you, you get pulled in a bunch of different ways. You know, Kobe wants the ball. You know, uh, uh, Jordan Clarkson needs the ball. This uh, uh, Randall needs the ball. But then at the same time, you have to live up to your number one, number two status. So, um, you know, obviously he wants to he, – he's going to be a good player. But, you know, I'd say give him time and then let the other guys, you know, continue to grow. And he'll grow as well. You mentioned Kobe a couple of times. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask, like, if you have any favorite stories from playing with Kobe from, from your time with the Lakers. And... Um, I've told some already. Yeah. It's but okay, Kobe's we're in the muse cage. Kobe, so you can, Kobe, Kobe, <laughs> in the muse cage, yeah. you can just say all stories are new. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kobe, I remember we were flying from L.A. to Philly. That's when he announced his uh, his uh, retirement. Yeah. You know, just that, you know, so. And Kobe used to have to sit. He sat by himself on the plane. So he, you know, it's two seats. He put his laptop down, his iPad, because he's always writing. He's always writing stories. Just, you know, and he hardly talked to anybody. But then, like, when he did talk, it wasn't about, you know, I was on a team with the Lakers with a bunch of young guys, and, and that's a, I'm not going into that stuff over there. But um, we would talk politics for, like, from the flight from L.A. to Philly. We would talk politics. And he's very insightful. 
He doesn't talk about Instagram hoes. Can I say hoes? Definitely. <laughs> he doesn't talk about Instagram That's hoes. usually what we talk about. He doesn't talk about any of that stuff. He's talking about, like, we talk business. Mm-hmm. You know, he, we talk, um, you know, we talked about his, uh, he's starting a venture capital firm. Um, you know, so we talked about a lot of stuff like that. So, and uh, so one time, so he was telling me that uh, he thinks Trump is going to win. And I was COVID. like, there's no way. This is Damn. the summer of what? 16? Yeah, so, you know, so. Or, wait, it's 16, you know, yeah. And obviously, like, he's gone to dinner. I mean, we had a game in Washington, you know, and Cole wasn't on the bus to go to the arena. He had lunch with Obama and everything like that, you know, in D.C. So, and Cole, you know, very insightful to stand you know, and he broke down why he thought, um, you know, with the states, you know, why Hillary isn't, you know, why didn't she, like, you know, she needs to visit this place, this yeah. place, this place to get these. Uh, votes. Why, why are we trusting Nate Silver? We need to trust Mamba. <laughs> yeah, Mamba, not, Mamba knows all. So literally, the Mamba model. And then, you know, so so I'm going. I'm like, yo, Cole, no, get the hell out of here. Like, you know, Hillary's going to win, and he's like, yeah, I want Hillary to win, you know. And but he broke it down because just like how he analyzes a game or a play. Yeah. He did that, and then I'm just like, yo, he, Trump is talking about, you know, stuff. Locker room talk. Instagram. Yeah, right. Locker room talk, yeah. yeah. And um, I'm like, there's no way the American people is going to vote this man in. And at uh, 5 a.m. or 3 a.m., he texts me, I told you so. I was going to ask. Oh, my God. He texted me at 3 a.m. That's people, also a wait. classic Kobe. Just yeah. be like, I'm making sure you know I won. Yeah, wait, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. How many people were on that text chain? <laughs> no, just me, <laughs> just me and I, I told I'll, literally yeah. everyone. Yeah, so I'm just like, oh, this, this dude wow. is like, it, it's crazy. But like, I. He just, he just smart. Like, he just goes about everyday life analyzing everything, you know? I don't want to get you in any trouble with yeah. any of the young players that you don't want to talk about. Yeah. But did any of them get on the team plane for the first time and just take that empty seat next to Kobe? No. They, they're just like, hey, <laughs> no, 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 like, no, you want to talk like, about Call of Duty or something? No, and, no, it's just like no. the team security would sit there. <laughs> okay. Just whenever Kobe, you know, um, showed up for the flight, then the security would get up, you know. Okay. So. Does he ever give anyone the nod, though? Like, you get to sit next to me? No. So, generally, uh, on team plane, I've heard a lot about team planes of the year. I remember we, we were talking to um, LaMarcus Aldridge back in All-Star in New Orleans a couple years ago, and he was talking to us about, guys, like, there's a very set way to people sit on the plane. Like, it's always very ordered. It's mm-hmm. always the same every flight. Is that generally your experience? Yeah, pretty much the same. So, uh, so when the, during the preseason, there's obviously, like, what, 18 players on the team. So the 12 guys on contract sit up front. And then, but unless you're a rookie. But let's just say, let's just say I'm I'm unemployed right now. I'm waiting for a job, you know? Hire so, this man. Come on. I know, man. You know, it's another discussion, but <laughs> we, we're here to have fun. Uh, but so let's say I were to go play for the Sixers, in, but I know I'm not going to make the team. Mm-hmm. But I have nine years. So, you know, the rook would have to, even though he's the number one pick, mm-hmm. I'll have to give up his seat and sit in the back. So you, you know? could take Fultz's seat on I the I could plane. take Fultz's seat, you know. But um, but then, you know, once the, those guys get cut, then, you know, he moves to the front. Right. You know? But I'm not sure. He may, you know, they may run things differently in different locker rooms. But that's how it was with us in Indiana when I was in L.A. Okay. and Charlotte and stuff like that, you know. And then, um, but, yeah, so pretty much. And there's, a, there's, a, there's, like, four seats for people that play poker. Two seats, two seats, and then this, that, and the other. So you just pick your seat, you sit there the whole time, and then you just don't, you don't make any waves, though, you know. So, um, and if somebody gets sick with me and don't fly, I'll put like a little, like, some blankets down, and I just lay down on the floor. Okay. And stuff Which like that. part of the plane has the designated magic mic screen? <laughs> just for like when you want to watch a little bit of McConaughey no, and they the cowboy. The, the what was the name things. of the, the bar in Tallahassee that that's supposed to set in? Does anybody remember? I, I, I've never seen the movie. You, you got to so. ask Lance Stevenson. He knows. Yeah. I know. I'll ask him up Lance. <laughs> yeah. just, just hit him up on Twitter. So you're on these flights. You get, I imagine you're getting a lot of TV time in, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's work backwards. So like right now, what mm-hmm. are you watching right now? Uh, Star Trek Discovery. Oh, okay. I'm a big Gene Roddenberry fan. Uh, Earth, you know, watch all the Star Trek stuff. Do you think they're doing his legacy justice on this new show? It's a different take on it. Um, Obviously, just a little bit more action-packed. Mm-hmm. I wish you didn't have to access the show through a paywall, you know, uh, CBS All yep. Access. But, you know, they have to make their money somehow. Uh, somehow CBS has to make a dime here and there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pulling for you, you know, guys. But, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll start up. <laughs> you know, but uh, I watched that. You know, I watched the Orville. Um, I watched a lot of sci-fi stuff. I watched Arrow. I like a lot of comic book shows. Like, the, uh, you know, Netflix has a real good, you know, bunch of, Marvel shows, 
I'm giving um, the, uh, what ABC has, you know, Shield. Yeah. I watched a bunch of, uh, I just finished Homeland the last season. Um, it was a different season of, yeah. of Homeland. My top show right now that I'm like literally like tweeting out to the creator was Black Mirror is one of the, I think one of the that's, best shows. That's our it's an underappreciated show. When did show you that, get hooked up on that? I literally watched the whole season this this summer. Okay. Yeah, all, all three seasons. Have people been summer. telling you about it? No, I just kept seeing it on my queue okay. on Netflix. What, what was the one if there was one that just White went Christmas through it? really messed me up though. Yeah. Like, yeah. like John Hamm is like a really did it justice. Did so. you watch the first season too? So I watched everything. Yeah, one, you know, yeah. Uh, what did you think of the like the scarier ones like White Bear? White Bear was actually good. I mean, you start to think about like, you know, um, they say that like the, 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 the prison systems don't, you know, rehabilitate mm -hmm. people to stand the other, but what's a different way? So it makes you think about how, you know, making somebody relive like something that, you know, they did to somebody. Um, so that, it makes you think about, you know, what, it, what really blew my mind, the, the, the GIF or GIF, whatever, is like, you know, that, that one is Star Trek, you know, but when they yeah. say Black Mirror equates to like your your phone screen being, you know, black. Yeah. So, you know, just, it makes you think about social media, like, you know, there's different, it's like a whole different podcast we have to go to with <laughs> Black Mirror. We're ready but, to. Uh, Our, but yeah, it, 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 you know, it, I see a translation to like, you know, where society could be if we social media and like your phones are always attached to you and like they have a rating system episode where you know like i can rate like your uber rating or whatever you like, could rate our podcast right now i feel you know? my stars going down <laughs> yeah with every question i ask about magic mike so yeah so uh i, I watch a bunch of different shows like that and uh um, narcos um you finished, did you watch season three of narcos yeah it was i thought it was pretty good though yeah I thought it was pretty Are good. you more into the uh, Pablo storyline stuff or the third season with the Cali Cartel? The Cali, I mean, I mean Cali Cartel right no, right the Cali Cartel one was good, yeah. you I know, because they really couldn't good. stretch that Pablo on one too much, too too far. But I was always a fan of like gangster movies. I read uh, the God, like Mario Puzo's uh, Godfather movies, uh, Omaretto, uh I believe that's the pr pr correct uh, pronunciation. But uh, I, I, I I like gangster stuff like that, yeah. you know. So. I'm not a gangster myself by any means, but you know, um, it's it's fun C to read CBS that stuff. CBS gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but then I also watch Housewives of New Jersey and uh, Orange County. I'm actually friends with uh, the Manzo brothers, whose mom Caroline was on the show. Yeah. Uh, we're, no plan way. we're planning on going to uh, UFC what two? It's in New York, November fourth. Huh. Uh, we're gonna go together and hang out. So, so uh, speaking of TV, obviously we alluded to it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You yourself. Or a veteran of, of being Got in front a of the camera. Got a bunch of questions from on, Parks heads who on, want to ask about this. On, yeah. on Parks and Rec. Yeah. Actually, I want to start. I do have some specific yeah. Pawnee, Indiana questions. Okay. <laughs> but before we even get into it, yeah. just in general, yeah. you, you've been an actor on a, collect, on a successful sitcom. <laughs> who do you think in the NBA yeah. could make a similar transition? Like, who is the, not who's just the funniest guy. Who's, who, who are the good actors? Now, not just the ones for, who are flop on the court, but like, who, who, have, <laughs> who um, has that gear, you know? I'm, I can name a few, yeah. I would say. Um, I feel like, maybe not sitcom, but to be on TV, a reality show, I yeah. feel like um, Swaggy P could be on TV. Yeah, probably. You know, yeah. He could be a comic relief. He could be, if it was Get Out, he could be, he could, he could have been like the guy in the yeah. TSA guy, you know? <laughs> he could fill that role. Um, I think Spencer Hawes could be on TV. Hmm. Uh, he's a funny guy, a uh, huge Republican. Um, so, you know, so you see more like Fox News. He I want to see yeah. Kobe's text to Spencer no, no, I, mean, <laughs> I was with Charlotte for a couple a couple of weeks, and you know, um, he walked in with like a locker up shirt on. You know, just that new. Nice. So, wow. That, but that, no, that's... like on game day. So, so, wow. so yeah. No, but he was just he was just messing with us though. But he's a funny guy. But uh, who else could be on TV? I don't know. Uh, is there somebody that seems dull on the court that oh, you'd yeah. be like, like, is George Hill like secretly hilarious? He's funny, <laughs> but, uh, but I don't think he could. I don't think he could do a TV. Like if if you gave him like one of those shows, like he could go on like Duck Dynasty and like go fishing with Cy, <laughs> yeah. go bass fishing with Cy, yeah. and it'd be hilarious. Yeah. You know? okay. But if you put him, I think, in a on a set, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. All right. But he loves his fishing and hunting, though. Because you, you were on set with Aziz Ansari, yes. Ben Schwartz. I mean, these Ben's are Schwartz. funny guys. Yes, yes. These are funny improvisers. Yes. Yeah. They, they just turn it on and they go, right? I mean, it was one of the most nerve-wracking things was it? in my life. Like, shooting a free throw in, at the Eastern Conference Finals, game on the line, that's easy. But when you, <laughs> uh, 
But when you have to like learn your lines, and like, like I was in like a couple scenes. And to be, you and should tell the people who don't know. What was your character? I played myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, an unemployed myself. I'm playing myself right now. And you didn't but, audition, though. You got the part. No, so if you guys want to know how I, how I, how I got onto sure. the show was, I'm obviously an avid TV show watcher, so um, there's a show that I watch with my wife called The Good Wife. It was on. Love The Good and, Wife. Um, That's why he's got yeah. that CBS All Access. Yeah. Good fight, man. Yeah, yes. The Good Fight's a good one, too. Um, but so watching The Good Wife, and I read the story on Yahoo!, um, you guys don't have beef with Yahoo or anything? No, not okay. yet. We're all good Until the story good. ends. Right. So I saw this story on Yahoo saying that, uh, well, at first I liked the show because the, the main characters went to Georgetown um, as well. So just throw that in there. But uh, I love it, man. But uh, but so what happened was I saw this article saying that uh, Derek Rose was supposed to make a cameo on the show. And, like, this is what I read. Now I'm not, you know. And it said that uh, since the show was set in Chicago, and obviously him being a bull, mm -hmm. that uh, he would be on the show. And so I heard that they set up, I read that they set up a car service for him. They waited for him at his front door, and they had, like, a plane for him to go to to L.A. to film the episode. I'm not, I can't remember exactly where they filmed the episode, but uh, he slept through the, the car ride or whatever like that. Yeah. So I'm saying to myself, like, what TV show could I be on <laughs> that makes relative, relative sense? So I'm like, oh, I played in Indiana. Pawnee, Indiana is a fictitious, you know, city. Uh, called my agent up. I'm like, hey, I want to try something out here. Could you get me on the show? And he's like, all right. I'm, my agent, David Falk, and Daniel Cancer are on the phone with me. I'm like, all right, we're going to call up Lauren Michaels. So he calls up Lauren Michaels, and then he tells Lauren Michaels, hey, my client would love to be on this show. And then, all right, so Lauren puts him in touch with the producer and, and, and the head people Mike at sure. Park. Mike Sure, a friend of mine as well. Um, so, and we... Uh, so we set it up, we get on talk, he said, all right, we'd love to have you on the show, we're going to this, that, and the other. So I was like, cool. So I get on the show, and then literally like, I'm going over lines, and I don't have that many lines. You know, um, that lift shrimp has like a long, like three or four lines, and he's going over it, you know. And <laughs> I'm just like, monologues. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So I'm saying to myself, all right, you know, they, everybody has these long monologues, and then it gets to me, and like one scene, they shoot for like three hours. So like literally like they do like, an hour of a close-up shot, yeah. wide, sh like a far away shot, and then the, the last hour is like off the top of their head. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, don't fuck up. Don't fuck Can I say that? Can I say that? Roll with it. I'm oh, fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. <laughs> you know? And then, like, I fucked up my lines. You know? Because, like, the timing was off a little bit. Do you, you remember know? the line? No, I don't. Because I'm thinking, do, do, do you remember in the episode of Seinfeld when Kramer has one line and yeah. it's, uh, these pretzels are making me thirsty? Yeah. <laughs> and he has like three days with these pretzels are yeah. making me thirsty. Yeah, I was, I was going through all that, yeah. you know, different uh, inflections and everything like that. So um, I'm doing it. And then literally like when they do the hour of like the guys off the top of their head, and that's when they, they take a lot of those scenes, and that's on the show, not just the ones on the script. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there hitting Aziz and Ben Schwartz going back and forth. And I started laughing. And I'm like, now they gotta set this whole thing over again. They gotta come, you know, put makeup on everybody, change the everything. I'm like, no. So that was the most nerve wracking thing ever. I want to see that B roll. Done. Is that are those bloopers of you cracking no, up? No, I don't think it's. I'm, I was such a minor character on that though. Like when they sent me the, the uh, the blooper reels at the end of the season, like I was in like one second of it though. So you know? we have a bunch of questions for Roy coming yeah. in from yeah. Twitter and yeah. Facebook. So I want to hit you up with some. Yeah. Let's start with the Parks one since we're talking about yeah. this. So Sean McCann, from Facebook says. Mm -hmm. Who won the one-on-one -on -one game? You were Detlef. Oh, I, I killed Detlef now, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure, like, when he was with the jail Blazers, he probably would have, you know, in his younger days, he probably would have tried to pop me in yeah. the face, you know. Bonzi would have, like, he's, dipped, Bonzi. Dipped, <laughs> dived at your knees. Yeah, yeah. He's mellowed since then. Um, he's a mellow guy. A couple yeah. people want to know, uh, does Tom Haverford still owe you money? Oh, no, we're good. We square. We he's square. square. He hit you with Venmo? Yeah, he it, probably invented Venmo. He probably Absolutely. did. He <laughs> sold it probably for like a, a thousand bucks. Then we actually have some, uh, just a general NBA question. Mm -hmm. One that I think is actually pretty interesting, especially with all the player movement mm -hmm. that's been going on, is uh, somebody was asking about, do you ever think about if the Pacers hadn't matched that Blazers offer mm -hmm. and you were with P the Portland, like what would have happened with your career necessarily? I'm not exactly sure. You know, um, you know knowing what I know now, I probably would have tried to like work on my perimeter game, mm -hmm. I'd say. But when I was in Indiana, they every day I worked on running down the lane, stealing and posting and stuff like that. But like just seeing how like Lamarcus, how he was in terms of like you know playing inside out, I yeah. probably would have probably 
done that a little bit more. I was, you know, when I was in Indiana, it was just like, all right, you know Verticality. What? Verticality, yeah. you're in the post, limit your jump shots, this, that, and the other, you know? So it, w it probably, I'm not sure. Things would have probably been a little bit different. I probably would have worked on, like, if he wanted to play inside, I probably would have worked on a little bit more outside game. I know how it would have been different. You would have been on Portlandia. Portlandia. I thought about that, More too. opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple more things. As a former teammate, how – this is from uh, Lil Benny Boy. How, as a former teammate, how do you think Paul George will mesh with Carmelo and Westbrook? Um, if they're all on the court at the same time, I could see there being a little bit of uh, – not a problem, but, like, they all need the ball to shoot, yeah, yeah. you know? So I feel like the coach – and like, I could be wrong. They have to, You have to stagger, stagger them. You know, when we were in Indiana, uh, uh, the coach would, all right, Lance would play like the first three, four minutes, then he would come out, even if he was hot. And then he would sit the rest of the first, and he'd go back in and early With in the, the second, second unit. Yeah. and that would be his team. Yeah. You know, so somebody there is going to have to, you know, be like, all right, you know what, I can suck it up, you know, and like maybe they give me the first two, three shots of the game, let me get going a little bit, then I come out, and then, you know, put me back in early second, let me play the whole second maybe. And like you know, that's got to be a delicate conversation. I don't know who takes that. Yeah, I don't know because you got like a it's not gonna MVP. Be Russ, Russ is like I play all forty. Yeah, minutes. yeah. <laughs> you play the MVP. And you got you know Paul is a tremendous player. I thought hands down. I've said this in the media. He could have gone down. I think as the greatest pacer player ever. You know, um, no disrespect to Reggie, but I said that if Paul was able to no disrespect win a to Austin Crozier. Yeah, Austin Crozier. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff Foster as well. But um, but yeah, but then Mellows obviously has years on people, so. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I feel like, you know, I, they're going to be a really competitive team, and I like them in the, in the West. Do you think the psychology has changed for players in terms of being more accepting of more superstars, more shooters on a team? Because certainly fans have now gotten greedy where you, there's the expectation that we can keep stacking players and it, it'll somehow work because there's more generosity or there's more ball sharing or it has worked. Has the players' psychology adapted yeah, as well? Yeah, because you guys are all coming from a position. At least at some point, you were the best player. Yeah, the yeah. Best, you know, like I think that you have to have people that are willing to sacrifice. Like when you see LeBron, D Wade, and Chris Bosh, mm -hmm. you know, like Chris was the short, what's the, what's the saying, um, short man on the stick or whatever. Yeah, yeah, low man, like low yeah, man. Yeah. You know, and like he sacrificed, but he won, and you know he got rewarded for it. With I think he got a hundred and thirty some million dollar contract. And uh, hope he gets better and is able to play again. Yeah. Uh, but somebody's going to have to sacrifice. And I feel like if you have players that don't have an ego and want to win, truly win, it, it, it could work. Uh, Daniel Iwau, uh from on YouTube asks, uh, how close was your Pacers team to, in beating LeBron? I mean, we look back I on mean, those teams, but I thought you guys, like. Yeah, I think we had a, a good run. You know, Frank Vogel came to us and, you know, said, hey, you know what? You came up on the dynasty, you know? So, um, I think that uh, we were one of the only teams to go to a game seven, but going to a game seven doesn't really mean anything because we lost. So. Yeah. Um, so I, re like, I remember you guys really fondly, though. I, th I felt like starting five, starting five, you, you gave them a, gave them a run. Yeah, but it was a good run. But to tell you the truth, like uh, respect that team. I have a story that uh, I think after I got like Chris Bosh, you know, killed me like the game six in Miami. He just killed me, and like I was basically having to help on LeBron and D-Wade driving, and then they kick it to Chris Bosh, and then he just he either hit threes or, you know, you know, uh, this, that, and the other. So, and I was, like, obviously pissed off, didn't play well. And so my agent, myself, and he has Greg Monroe and Otto Porter. Uh, we were all down there, and we went to a restaurant, and literally it was, like, midnight after the game because, you know, the playoff games run long, and a restaurant stayed open for us. And literally, like, we're eating dinner, and my appetizer comes out, and all of a sudden, you see all the waiters and everybody pushing tables together. No and I'm way. just like, yo, what's going on here? And all of a sudden, I see a bunch of people coming in. And it was LeBron, oh, no, D-Wade, no. and Chris Bosh. <laughs> and I think, like, has, I'm not sure. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Me, you know? <laughs> and then I'm just like, I just got whooped by these guys. And then they all push the table together. All families are there, and they're celebrating because they obviously are going to the finals. And I, I respect LeBron because people actually, you know, the biggest question I always people ask me is like, oh, what's LeBron like? Is he an asshole? Is that? I'm like, no, like, I'm not saying these other two guys weren't, but LeBron was the only one to come up to the table, shake oh. everybody's hand and say hello, this, that, and the other. So I, was, I, I remember that. You That's know? really cool. So, like, you know, he is a nice guy. And um, when, when I hear people talk crap about him, it's like, you know, those small things like that, you know, even as an NBA player or even as a, 
you know, as a somebody, he probably do that for a kid as well, you know. So yeah. you remember that type of stuff. So that said, people, there yeah. are a lot of restaurants in Miami. Yeah, <laughs> out of all the restaurants <laughs> in Miami, he did choose to dine there. Yeah, I'm he just did saying. choose to dine there. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that Greenwald and I talk about a lot on the show is uh, the reality or like the verisimilitude of certain basketball oh. scenes mm -hmm. in TV shows and in movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that we were sort of obsessed about in the second season of Mr. Robot mm -hmm. was how Great nobody show. who was playing basketball on that show had ever played basketball before because they like they were just like not adhering to any rules. <laughs> yeah. This was this was your uh, thing. You were watching the background characters. It wasn't even the background because there was like a whole oh, scene. Yeah. So do you get does it drive you nuts when you watch shows or see movies and there's like some basketball in it and uh, and it just is not realistic at all? Um, I was talking to one of the former writers on uh, LeBron's. Show what's the name? Survivors of Remorse. Survivors yeah. Remorse, and I was just like, I, I talked to several NBA players, and this is not a knock on LeBron. I know that you know his team brings him offers, or and then he attaches his name, mm -hmm. and you know he works with them, this and the other. But and I'm not sure to what extent he does, and I feel like that's really smart. I know he started his production company and he's building infrastructure for that, but um, but I always felt that uh, shows like that never really depict like a real NBA. Lifestyle because like, I remember one of the shows cam the main character is back in Boston and He has some ordeal and he has to on the day of the game. He's driving through all of Boston I'm like on a game day you go to shoot around you have team lunch and you go take a nap you know, like, <laughs> This isn't real. This is an yeah. NBA life. I don't you know, know if that so, would be peak TV no, but, that, be real, so. but that puts up a question I've often yeah. wondered about which is when you see NBA life yeah. or professional sports life in general represented yeah. is the truth crazier than fiction or is it just more everyday and kind of boring than fiction? I, I will tell you it's a little bit a little bit more boring than, than than fiction because like when i was in high school and college all oh, you hear about um oh, there's gonna be women in the, in the lobbies of the hotels it's crazy you get to the hotel the security is there like you know we're they're pushing people out the way to get us to the lock me to the to the to the to the, to the elevator so there's no there's nothing of that going on. The only the, time the I ever saw the, tables yeah, no. the, <laughs> the only time I saw it was when I was at the All Star game twice, and you know uh, I get to the hotel, and there's like literally like lines of just women just on laptops and and nice dresses. What are they know? doing on laptops? I don't know. You're probably looking up <laughs> just, people. Just Venmoing. People. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> but like that's the only time I've ever seen it. Yeah. 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 You gotta, gotta pay some bills. Yeah. Um, all right, let's wrap it up. You got any more questions for Roy while we're here? You want uh, to recommend a show for him to watch right now? I know. It sounds like you've been watching everything. We yeah. both, we both really into Mindhunter right now. That's on uh, Netflix. I heard that's a good one. It's yeah. really, yeah, really good. good. Uh, I like period pieces. If you ever catch a show, uh, Outlander is pretty good. Okay. Do you watch Peaky Blinders? I watch Peaky Blinders. I watched the first two seasons, and then there wasn't enough action for me to keep coming back. Okay. Speaking you know? of not enough action, yeah. do you watch The Americans? Oh, Americans is great. Oh, my See? God. Americans is great. Yes. Americans is great. <laughs> now I definitely need to get your aid. <laughs> Americans is great. This guy, five years in, I'm yeah. telling him. Yeah, it's, it's a good show. All right, we're going to end with a bit. I wanted to see if I could do this because it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Okay. Well, maybe just as a bit. You have one for me. I should get rid of Gatorade. Is it set the stage for people who don't know this? All right. So oh. just like, did you know that this was a thing when you were no, doing it? No. What, what year was this? This is like probably 2011. I think this is when Vine first came out. So basically, I would thank you. I want no part of this. <laughs> I, I would like some sort of Gallagher yeah. bib to just like, not so, Jason Gallagher, but uh, yeah. But I was, uh, I was in a timeout. I was thirsty um <laughs> they handed me a gatorade and I, it was a quick uh, it was supposed to be a uh a, a, a 30 second time out. So you're not supposed to go to the bench i believe so i need to take it drink my gatorade real quick then stand up back on the court you get a technical and i just finished it in like six seconds and then it just kind of like Bl not blew, blew up, but like it, it you became know, a thing. It became and a thing. For here's a the thing while. you have to understand is that when you watch this vine, we'll, yeah. we'll send out a link to it. Yeah. It looks like Roy is drinking like a sippy cup <laughs> because <laughs> this is what I want people to see. It already doesn't look fair. like it yeah. already doesn't look fair. Yeah, so, so I think I'm gonna give myself. How, how long should I give myself? I don't look I only have six yeah. seconds. I mean, like, I don't even Somebody right. has the official counter. How right. thirsty you? So are we going to see how far each of us can get? He's just going to... What I want to ask you before yeah. you do this, in both literal and figurative senses, is how thirsty are you? I am thirsty. I love this flavor of Gatorade. Okay. Okay, ready? Uh-huh. Yeah. Cheers. To your health. To your health. One, got it? One, two, three. Two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. He didn't need eight, the six seconds. Eight.
Ten. Chris is being iced Eleven. right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking the ice chair. <laughs> <laughs> you notice as he was drinking, he fell to one knee. Wow. I didn't do it. I failed. Roy Hibbert. That was brave. Thank you for Roy joining the watch. Yeah. NBA broke, preview for Wizzle continues. Do it again, but I did it. You broke your own record. Boy, I'm hydrated. Let's go. Cool. Cool. I got it in me. Cool. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Got you.